Deliverance Church Theatre, Life Transformation Center, welcomes you to a life-changing program. Tazama Ju. Psalms 121 says, Our help comes from above, and your life will never be the same again. Tazama Ju. Let it be your prayer. Spirit, Together, let's connect with the heavens. Be blessed. Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise God. God is good. All the time. I am a testimony. God is good. All the time. All the time. I am a testimony. Hallelujah. Karibisha kwa ibada zetu hizi za Jumatano na tunaamini kwamba Mungu wako pamoja nasi na wako pia pamoja na wewe tunapomsifu na kumwabudu Mungu wetu atazungumza nasi haleluya haleluya thank you Jesus oh haleluya Cheza tu kidogo cheza kidogo mali ulipo kabon Cheza ya Yesu cheza ya Yesu Nimeona
Besides you, there is no other God like you. We are connecting ourselves to heavens, to the throne where the 24 elders and the four living creatures they bow down daily, and thousands and thousands of angels they bow down daily to declare that you are the Lord of hosts. To declare that you are holy, holy, O oh Lord. For Lord, there is none else like you. We appreciate you this day. We appreciate the fact that you have given us life. And life eternal, O oh Lord. We are grateful. We are thankful. We glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, that you are enthroned. The entire in the entire world, O oh Lord, that you are the one Lord that has the majesty, for you are reigning and you are ruling, Lord, through the people that you have ordained, dear Father. Thank you that you are God. Father Lord, we remember the government of Kenya, it is in your hands, O oh Lord. Guide them and lead them to the way of righteousness, O oh God. And the entire government of the whole world, O oh God. Father, guide us. You are our God. Even the body of Christ, heaven, heaven, Father, we pray that you continue to empower us. Our Lord, releasing your spirit, the way that you did in the upper room, in Jerusalem, when the apostles and the disciples were waiting for you, Release your spirit, Lord, Father, upon the churches, upon the body of Christ for your glory. Thank you that you are God. Bless us and anoint us, Father. As we share your word, let it come with the power, with authority and anointing, and with the miracles 
In Jesus' name, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Amen. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. And I welcome you in this divine encounter service where we are going to encounter Jesus. As I start, my topic today is where Jesus is. There is no crisis. Where Jesus is, there is no crisis. We will read from the book of uh, John chapter 6, from verse 1 to verse 15. And the Lord will help us. Welcome every one of us. The Bible says, John chapter 6, verse 1 to 15. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were deceased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat on, uh, with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of Jew, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who, have, who has five berry loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples. And the disciples to those sitting down. And likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gather up them up, and filled the twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the servant a prophet who is to come into the world. Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we are coming before you to give you thanks because of the sermon that is ahead of us. Father, minister to us and also to our lives. Minister to the entire world through this word today in the name of Jesus Christ. That, dear Father, miracles will be experienced in the lives of the people of God that hears this voice for your glory. In Jesus' name, I pray and I give thanks. Amen. I would like to declare this uh, evening that where Jesus is there is no crisis as we have read in the book of John uh, chapter 6 from verse 1 to 15 we have read uh, an action that Jesus did this action was feeding the 5,000 men excluding the children and the women and I want to declare that Jesus is in control of every season of our lives. And in every season of the, our lives, Jesus, it does not take him for surprise. Because himself, he is God. And where he is, 
There is no crisis. He is not humiliated upon anything else. He is not humiliated by lack of food. Because Jesus Christ is able to do great things. When we read in this book, in the book of John, and also it is recorded in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 14, 13 to 21, and also Mark chapter 6, 30, uh, chapter 6, 30 to 44, Luke chapter 9, 10 to 17, we have found that Jesus had done many things. And the people who witnessed what he was doing, they followed him. When they followed him, he looked at them and he saw that these people, they are surely exhausted. They are surely tired. And what he did is that he looked at one of his disciples who was called Philip and asked Philip, Philip, where can we get money for all, food for all these people? Because 5,000 and it was approximately 20,000 because Men, uh, women, and children were not included. But Philip, he looked at his physical, physical things that he could have hold. And he said that a salary of eight months of somebody would not be able to feed this multitude. But Jesus, he was asking him, where can we get, man, uh, where can we get food? In order to feed these people. But the Bible says. That even when he asked those questions. He knew. What he is going to do. Hallelujah. Jesus. Son of the living God. Always. In our lives. Those who have been called by his name. Those who are the follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Always he knows. What he will do. In our lives. That is why when he looked at the people who had followed him, although they were following him because of the miracles that he had seen him doing, he had turned water into wine in the wedding of Canal of Galilee. So they knew that this Jesus is able to do things. He had healed. He had, uh, you know, lifted up people. They followed him because of that. Nevertheless, Jesus knowing what these people are following him um, because of what he has done. He was not discouraged. He knew that even when they are following me because of the physical demand, the physical need, I will use the uh, spiritual, I will I impact spiritual need in their lives. So he taught them. The Bible says that he, the, uh, the Jesus took that opportunity and he met the physical need of the people. Jesus used this opportunity even to test his disciples whether the way that he had been working with them that they have been able to hold or grasp his teachings. So sometimes in our lives there are things that happen in our lives so that Jesus Christ can know that whatever teachings that we are receiving whether we are receiving it wholeheartedly or it is a partial or, or it is not coming to our lives the way that it should be. So he asked Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? But he already knew that there is something, there is a solution that he is going to provide to that problem. And um, in the midst of the, in the midst of those questions, there was an um, Andrew was there and the Bible says that one of his disciples, Andrew, Sim, uh, uh, Andrew, Simon's Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? Andrew had a revelation that he is carrying Jesus, he is with Jesus, who is the creator, the creator of the earth and heavens, and know that are in them, the creator of food, the creator of vegetation, the creator of everything that is required 
to sustain humanity. So he looked at the boy and he says that could be if I prompt this idea with faith, Jesus may capture it. And since he's the one who is a multiplier, he can be able to multiply that which is held by this boy. So he says that there is a boy here. There is a boy here who has only five barley loaves, some small lunch that the mother had packed for him, and also two fish. But what were they? That is the question that he asks. But Jesus knew what he was going to do. And he sees, hallelujah, Jesus sees even deeper than the way that we human beings see. It is recorded in the Bible that there is somewhere that he has said that he told Nathaniel, Nathaniel, I show you when you are sitting or under a fig tree. So Jesus sees, he sees us. He had seen the Lord. He had seen the preparation of the mother of that boy when he was preparing the loaf. So in your situation, the situation that you are in now, Jesus has seen that situation even before hard. And he knows when you believe in him, he knows what he is going to do in that situation. Jesus, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2, 24 to 25, that Jesus Christ knows the heart of the people. So whatever that we are doing, he knows our heart. He knows our mind. And he knows what you have stored in your heart. And this uh, evening, my prayer is that you have um, stored in your heart righteousness that Jesus Christ can appear to your life because he will never appear when someone is, um, you know, uh, mixing him or herself with uh, a lot of dirt, a lot of filthy. Jesus knows our hearts. The Bible also says in the book of John, chapter 4, 8, that Jesus appeared in the Samaritan woman and he had the, the history he had the history of the Samaritan woman. So Jesus has our history. Even today, as I speak, he has the history of this world. He has the history of this nation. He has a history of individuals. So it is you that will be able to ask yourself, since that Jesus Christ knows my history, since he knows me, how am I walking? How am I doing things? Am I doing things that are pleasing his name or exalting and magnifying his name? That is a question that we need to ask every one of us. Let's go ahead. Andrew went further. He went further than Philip. My prayer is that you shall go further, further than other people. Hallelujah. Go further than other people. He went further by asking, by saying, that there, is a, there could be a practical solution that is going to be gotten here from this little boy. Hallelujah. His faith, his faith was, was wide. His faith was big. It is not like Philip who is wondering. But he, he said that there is a boy here. And Jesus, when he saw and he had the faith that even Andrew had, and he had a little faith, he says that this boy, that the, the bread that was with this boy should be brought to him, even the small fish. Hallelujah. The small fish. And he told the people, sit down. You will be fed. And I know that many were wondering that why is he telling us to sit down? That you will be fed. But actually, he told the disciples, make uh, people to sit in groups so that they can be distributed. And when he gave thanks to heaven, and I believe that he said, Father, you are the multiplier of everything that is in this world. I speak multiplication in your life, multiplication of finances in your life, because Father is the multiplier. He is the multiplier of everything. He is the multiplier of knowledge. He is the multiplier of wisdom. He is the multiplier of the physical and finances. Hallelujah. My prayer this afternoon of this evening is that the Lord will multiply 
that which you have. Praise the Lord. Thank God so much that the boy, when he was there, he did not withhold what the mother had given him. So my question to us, to myself, am I withholding that which the Lord has given me? Or am I releasing it so that it can be multiplied by the Lord Jesus Christ? Praise the Lord. There are some lessons that we can learn from here. That Jesus, he is God of compassion. He is God of compassion. It reminds us that Jesus Christ, he has compassion over the people. You see this in the part of the passage that we have read. That Jesus was traveling and he was healing the sick at the same time. So he had compassion. So this time he has compassion. Though where he is, there is no uh, a crisis. At the end of the day, the disciples want, wanted to, uh, the crowd to go away because it is getting dark and there is nothing to feed. But then Jesus said to them, let the people remain and instead give them some food. Jesus is saying, remain and you'll be given some food. Hallelujah. You will be given what you want. Just remain in him. Remain where he is. This is where I will remain. To where Jesus is. The, the, this character of uh, Jesus is exhibited uh, of the, uh, the compassion. Compassion that he had. And that's why the Bible says that he left his throne in heaven. For God so loved the world that he, uh, that he left. He gave his only begotten son. That whoever will believe in him, when you believe in Jesus Christ, you will not perish. These people who had come to Jesus, they had believed in him. Although they were following the miracles, they were believing in him that he can make, he can do a miracle. And actually, because of that belief, he did a miracle. And they were able to be fed, the 5,000. It also tells us that Jesus uses other people to bless others. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ used this boy to bless others. My question is, in this walk of life, are you able to bless somebody? Because you can be used to bless others. You are in employment and you have seen that there is a vacancy somewhere. Are you able to call a person and tell him come? And here there is an employment. You are in a business. Are you able to teach somebody that he can uh, be able to do the same similar business? You have food. Are you able to bless somebody? You have uh, the knowledge and what it takes, even in the ministry. Are you able to lift up somebody? Jesus, he uses other people to bless others. He uses the boy who had this loaf of bread. And he provided food for all. Therefore, this night, ask yourself and assess yourself that the whole of the day, have you blessed anybody? Tomorrow, will you bless somebody? The days to come and the years to come, will you bless somebody? Because Jesus, he uses people to bless others. One thing that amazed me is that the boy did not look at the uh, a loaf of bread and say that if this one I surrender to Jesus, what am I going to eat? He surrendered. He surrendered. And finally, the boy saw a miracle because there were collected 12 baskets of food which was remaining. Hallelujah. May you bless people such that you will collect or you'll be left with much more. There will be multiplication in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus then took the, the loaf, gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of fish of uh, five loaves and over 
uh, left over after the people ate and they were satisfied. Praise the Lord. When you bless people, you will not remain where you are. Jehovah will multiply you. When you bless people with the little that you have, Jehovah will provide for you. Believe you me, in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, Jesus affirms us that it affirms us that Jesus is bigger enough than our expectation. Hallelujah. I would like to have Jesus. Jesus Christ, when he is in you, he is bigger than expectation that you'll be having. Because he will do wonders more than what is expected. This boy, when he asked for, when Jesus asked for the loaf of bread, they did not know that this, this food is going to be enough. But Jesus, he did, he surpasses all the expectation. Even today, Jesus Christ, son of the living God, when you believe in him, he will surpass all your expectations. Is it healing that you want? He will surpass all your expectations. Is it food that you want? He will surpass all your expectations. Is it miracle of finances that you want? He will surpass your expectation because he is God. Feeding the thousand, five thousand, is an example that Jesus Christ has power. He may look of mad. Let that the food be multiplied. And it was multiplied. May Jesus command in our lives that let even the finances, the money, and everything that we have be multiplied because he is able. Hallelujah. Why? Jesus is the owner of everything. Every single thing. The Bible says he is before all things and in him all things hold together. Hallelujah. I like that. All things hold together. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Believe in him because he is the one who holds all things together. The other one is that the feeding of the 5,000, it tells us that nothing we face here on earth, it is too big for God. Hallelujah. The 5,000, they were hungry, they were tired, and they were to go home when they were hungry. But there was, there is, there was nothing which was too difficult for God. Because God is concerned about the people. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. What you will eat, what you will drink, or about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into bands. And yet, your heavenly Father feed them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you, by anxious, can add a single hour to a span of life? You cannot add a single hour or a minute to your life. And the Bible is telling us and assuring us, Jesus Christ, he is the one who feeds us. And since he feeds the, uh, the birds of the air, he will also feed us. He will also supply to us. He is the one who takes care of uh, things which are not important than a human being. The Bible says, you are more valuable. You are more honorable in his eyes. He will feed you. He will supply you. Just believe in Jesus Christ. In Jesus, there is no crisis. Hallelujah. Let's think about um, Jesus' thought about his power. The same Jesus is washing out our affairs. I want to assure you that the same Jesus who was feeding the 5,000, he's washing over our affairs. Therefore, he will supply. He wants each one of us to believe in him, to trust in him, 
when you trust in the Lord Jesus, he will become all in all in your life. When circumstances are beyond our control, we expect him to take care. He takes care of our physical needs, our spiritual needs, because he is God. I'm speaking about Jesus. Therefore, do not worry. Jesus may ask us to do something small. Do that which he is asking you, and he will surely multiply you. He will surely add to you. The Bible says that seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and all other things he shall add them to you. Probably you are there and you are not born again. Seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and other things he shall add them to you. You are there. You are in crisis of sickness and disease. Seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and other things he shall add them to you. You are there, you are hungry, or you are confused. You don't know where to get money. You don't know what to do. Seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and other things he shall add them to you. Where Jesus says, there is no crisis. I believe that the sermon has built you up Believe in the Lord Jesus and he will make a way for you. Shall we pray together? Our Father and our God in the name of Jesus, we thank you that Jesus, where you are, there is no crisis. You are in us and therefore, our Father, there is no crisis because you shall meet all our needs. In the way that you met the needs of the 5,000 men, excluding the children of the women who were in the meeting and you were able to feed them until there was remnant of 12 baskets. Our Father may you multiply that which we have, our Father. Lord, we pray that we shall be blessed of the people in whatever thing that we have so that you can multiply it. We also bless the work of the, uh, the, the, work of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive for the glory, receive for the honor, as you do a miracle in our lives for your glory. Thank you that you are God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we give thanks. The Lord bless you. May you receive your miracle. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Spirit, lead me with my trust and with the Deliverance Church Theater, Life Transformation Center welcomes you to a life-changing program. Tazama Ju. Psalms 121 says, Our help comes from above, and your life will never be the same again. Tazama Ju. Let it be your prayer. Spirit, me with my choices, with our Together, let's connect with the heavens. Be blessed.